Hi, this is my 13th video on helping people study for actuarial exam 2 on financial math, and in this video we'll look at problem 1.5.7s in Broberman, ultimately calculating a nominal annual rate of discount. But before we do that, I think it would be good to review the idea of a rate of discount that I introduced in the last video. So here's the problem, but let's ignore the problem for the moment and review. Again, last video I introduced the idea of an effective annual rate of discount. In this video, um, it would be helpful to be a little bit more general here at the beginning. Let's call it an effective periodic instead of annual rate of discount. Let's go ahead and use the letter D for it. Though this D will be different both in value and as far as an idea goes from the D that we end up calculating for this problem here. Let's go ahead and give this a value. Let's pretend it's 0 0.02, 2%. What this represents is the interest that you earn during a, a period dividing, divided by the ending amount at the end of the period. If you earn I of interest, and your starting amount was 1, so that your ending amount is 1 plus I, then D equals the ratio I divided by 1 plus I, and this is a true fact where an I now here is the effective periodic interest rate. What would uh, I be in this case? You can solve this equation for I in terms of D. You can multiply both sides by 1 plus I and get D plus I D equals I. If you rearrange, you can write this as I times 1 minus D equals D, so that I equals D over 1 minus D. Let's see what that turns out to be here. So if D is 0 0.02, I'd be taking 0 0.02 and dividing it by 0.98. I is 0 0.020408 approximately in this example. Um, 1 minus D is something you should be familiar with as, as well. 1 minus 0 0.02 is 0.98. That is the value of V, the effective periodic discount factor. Not discount rate, but discount factor. 1 minus D, which is 0.98, 98%. This is the thing you multiply an amount by to get the uh, value of that amount in the preceding uh, year if it's an annual rate. Um, it's also helpful to be able to solve these equations for 1 plus I. For example, if I take this equation and add 1 to both sides, and simplify by getting a common denominator of 1 minus d. I get 1 over 1 minus d. 1 plus i is the same as 1 over 1 minus d, which is the same as 1 minus d to the negative 1 power. So 1 plus i is the effective periodic growth factor. So is 1 minus d to the negative 1. That's good to realize, and that will be helpful for solving this problem. 1 minus d to the negative 1 is the same as 1 plus i. It's the effective and a periodic growth factor. It's what you multiply an amount by to get the value of that amount in the next uh, year, if it's, again, a, a year. All right, so that's the gist of the review here. Let's now go on to solving this problem. Jeff deposits 10 into a fund today and 20, 15 years later. Oh boy, this seems kind of complicated, but it's actually not quite as hard as it looks. Interest is credited as a, at a nominal discount rate, D, compounded quarterly for the first 10 years, and at a nominal interest rate of 6% compounded semi-annually thereafter. The accumulated balance at the end of 30 years is 100. Calculate D is our goal. So this seems real complicated. It's not as bad as it seems. You just have to, you know, be, be patient and think things through carefully. Let's go ahead and draw a number line. Here's time zero. Uh, time 10 will be important because that's when the um, way interest is calculated changes. Time 15 is important as well because you're going to deposit 20 there. And 100 is the value at time 30. So we deposit 10 at time zero today, 20, 15 years later, the future value of these things at time 30 is 100. 
We're not depositing 100, that is the future value. But again, interest is being credited according to this uh, nominal rate D compounded quarterly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use a common actuarial notation here that is different than D here. I'm going to put D with a superscript of 4 in parentheses here. Um, that is common notation for a discount rate that is compounded four times per year, a nominal discount rate compounded four times per year. And ultimately, this is the same as D in this problem, and that's what I want to solve for. And then for the last 20 years, we've got this 6% rate. That's going to be a nominal rate compounded twice a year, 0 0.06, compounded semi-annually. All right, what do we do with this? Well, let's think about what happens with the 10. The 10, uh, for the first 10 years, interest is credited every quarter. The growth factor, according to my review here, is really 1 minus the periodic discount rate to the negative 1 power, but I have to apply that 40 times over 10 years because it's compounded quarterly. So I'm going to get a negative 40 power. What goes here? Should it be D? Should it be D4? Well, it should be D4 divided by 4 because that ratio will be the periodic discount factor. D4 is the nominal annual discount factor. I've got to divide that by, by 4 to get the quarterly periodic discount factor. Again, raising to the negative 1 power would give me the growth factor for one period, one quarter. I've got 40 quarters in 10 years. I've got to raise to the negative 40 power. This will give a, the future value of the 10 at time 10. Then I need to push that forward in time another 20 years, according to the fact that I've got a semi-annual rate of 6%. So I have 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 2. For 20 years, compounded semi-annually, you're going to have 20 times 2, 40 compounding periods for that one. So this is going to be the future value of the 10. What about the 20 at time 15? That just gets pushed forward in time by 15 years with the 6% uh, rate compounded semi-annually. 15 years compounded semi-annually is going to be 30 periods. This has to equal 100. And now we solve this equation for D4, and that will be the same as what D is up there. D4 does equal D down here. All right, so now it's just a matter of using your calculator. So let's go ahead and figure out what that is there. 0 0.06 divided by 2 is 0 0.03. We have 1.03 to the 30th power. So I'm raising to the 30th power. I hit my exponent key there, 30. 1.03 to the 30th power is that, times 20. This amount right here, I'm going to go ahead and write all the decimals because we don't want rounding errors to creep it up on us. I'm kind of always careful about that. There's what that is. Now let's go ahead and store that in register 0 so I wouldn't really actually have to write it down. So now that it's stored in register 0, Let's also calculate now uh, 1.03 to the 40th times 10. 1.03 to the 40th. 40th power, I press my power button again. Uh, times 10. So what I have here, I'll go ahead and write it down. If I can see it, is this becomes 32.62037792 times 1 minus d4 over 4 to the negative 40th power. All right, let's go ahead and store this number now in register 1. All right, now do the algebra. I'm going to subtract 48.545 from both sides, so I'll take 100 minus what's in register 0 to get this. Then i got to divide both sides by 32.62. Now I divide this by what's in register 1. To get that. So now I have the equation 1 minus d4 divided by 4 to the negative 40th power 
is 1.57738 Again, if you're good at calculator usage, you don't actually have to write these things down. I could raise both sides to the negative 1 over 40 power, or I could first take the reciprocal of both sides, effectively on the calculator, take the reciprocal of this. Oops, wrong button. There we go. And raise that to the 1 over 40 power, positive 1 over 40 power, which is 0 0.025 raise it to the 0 0.025 power. And what we get then is, um, let's see, is this right? Something seems wrong here. Did I do the reciprocal of that? Let's see, um, something seems wrong. Let me go back, 1.57738. Take the reciprocal of that raise it to the 0 0.025 power. That's better. Got to get something less than 1. So 1 minus d4 over 4 is 0 0.9886705.27. Um, I could subtract that from 1 and then multiply that by 4 to solve for d4 which is the same as D in the problem, which is then about 0 0.0453. And that is the correct answer. And I'll end the video right there.